cross. And we see him depicted with the, with the loincloth wrapped around him. And I know that's just to be polite, okay? But that's not how Jesus hung on the cross. They stripped him naked. They wanted to shame him, humiliate him in every way possible. And so to have this man stripped and beaten and left bleeding on the side of the road was unbelievable. And so all of a sudden, here comes the priest. Now, again, I think it's interesting because there are so many parallels to our Christian walk and who Jesus is to us in this story. It is unreal because a thief came and stripped him of his glory. And I believe if we go all the way back to Adam and Eve in the garden, that's what Satan did. I don't know. You know, we see these beautiful pictures once again of Adam and Eve wearing these fig leaves. Man, they've got the most beautiful fig leaves you could ever imagine. There must have been a J.C. Penny fig leaf just down the road or a Macy's fig leaf. Uh, four points and a stem just right over here. And they could go in and they could buy a, buy a beautiful fig leaf and cover their private parts. You know, I mean, it just seems like that's what they must have done. But uh, how many you know in the Bible times I don't believe that there was any shame when Adam and Eve walked in that garden I don't think there was a shame of being naked they did not look at themselves and say I'm too fat I'm too skinny I don't have the right muscle tone I don't look like the girl on a JC Penny fig leaf and, and uh, she didn't judge herself according to any of those things she just uh, walked in the glory of God and their covering I believe according to the word of God was the glory of God. And the enemy didn't want to come and make them see themselves naked. He wanted to come and take the glory of God away from them. But at the cross, Jesus came to bring the glory of God back to us. I believe the church has got it mixed up. We're seeking all of these things. But what we need to seek is the glory, God's manifested presence in our life. And man, when we get into glory, stuff's going to start happening. And uh, that was what the enemy wanted to do. Want to strip them of their glory. Take God's presence away from them. And all of a sudden, we know we get into all the logistics of it, but Adam and Eve, the fall comes. And God comes walking through the garden. Do you think God, when he's talking to Adam and Eve, does not know what has transpired? He knows. Adam, Eve, where are you at? I think if I would have been in that moment, and I would have realized, I don't think I'll ever be able to walk with God this way again. I think I would have been at his feet crying at bottom. I'm so sorry. I've messed up so bad. I've fallen so short. But they cried out, God, we, we've hid ourselves because we're naked. We've lost your glory. It's like Samson who shook himself and there was no one there. He says, well, who has told you these things? Well, a woman has eaten fruit and then she convinced me to eat the fruit. Uh, the snake, the deceiver, has told us all these things and brought this knowledge into our lives. So God being God recognized they need a covering. Every one of us need a covering. That's why God gives us a pastor. The River of Life's got an awesome pastor because God recognizes you need a covering. You need a covering. I know in the house, in the house, the family unit, God, God gives us a covering. That is, uh, that husband covers that family and prays for that family. And, and pastor gets in the glory for us and comes in and brings the glory to the house and teaches us how to walk according to the word of God so that glory can be restored in our life again. And God comes walking in, Adam, where are you at? You've lost your glory, son. And so I believe God went and found, uh, found this beautiful animal and he spilled its blood. And he brings that blood-covered cloak to Adam and Eve. And he covers their nakedness with that blood. Once again, talking about the very thing that Jesus did for us at Calvary. The Lamb of God's blood was shed. And that blood covered our shame. It covered our nakedness. There he lay. There he was hung, hanging on the cross naked. But that nakedness covered our shame and our humility and our humanity to say that you no longer have to have fear to come in the presence of God again. You can come and experience his glory. The veil was ripped. And there's no longer a separation between us and God. And the thief came and stripped them of their glory. And so the thief came and stripped the Samaritan of his glory. Took his clothes off and beat him, wounded and broken. And all of a sudden, 
I believe if somebody help me, I, 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 I believe the priest comes by first. Is that right? priest makes his white way by and he looks and recognizing if I touch him, I might become unclean. And so he comes and he sees him and he goes way to the other side of the road. That's what he, the priest represents religion. That's what religion will always do. Religion will go to the other side of the road and get as far away from that dirtiness and that shame and that nakedness as possible because they don't want to get any of that on their life. Friend, we have got to be a church that reaches out to the broken, that reaches out to the naked and the destitute and the sad and the broken and those that have nobody else. You might be the only Jesus they ever see. We had a, we had a lady, we had 2001, that summer we had an awesome revival breakout when we first started pastoring. We've just been there since, uh, I guess we've been there since March. I've been there since March. And in, uh, in uh, April, we had a revival, and God, God moved and did some things, but we had a breakout revival in the month of June. We went the whole month of June. We had a revival every day but Saturday. People came from everywhere. We went down to the Salvation Army. I don't know how active the Salvation Army here, but in Waterloo, it was amazing. Salvation Army there had all kinds of people that were displaced and hungry and had no place to live. We'd go down, pick them up, bring them to church. And we got them saved and got them full of the Holy Ghost, and got them jobs, and helped them get houses. Well, um, uh, now all, not all of our growth came from those places, but a lot of it did. So we literally went from a church of about 15, 20 people to by the end of the summer, I think the last service, uh, last uh uh, first Sunday of September, we had about 150 people, and we had grown from, uh, uh, again, 15, 20 people to 150 people from uh, uh, March until September of 2001. It, we were a mess, though. I mean, we were. We had fights breaking out in the parking lot. There were unchurched people. I mean, listen, we had some folks get into a fight out in the pastor out in the church parking lot. We had this big pine tree, and this one girl grabbed this other girl by her weave and grabbed the weave and threw it up in the tree. That weave was in that tree for months. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. I thought, I ain't touching that. I don't know what that is. And somebody's like, Pastor, that's a weave. And someone says, what's a weave? You know, it's, it's something you put in your hair. You know, I don't have a weave, you know, but never had a weave, you know. Pastor, you got a weave. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, um, so man, we had some stuff. We had, these, we had this, old, this old skinny guy, old skinny messed up guy messed up in life and, and had these two girls fighting over him and they got over they got fighting in front, uh, fight over this guy out in the foyer of the church and uh, i had to go to him i had to break it up and this one lady she came in the sanctuary yelling at folks we had revival now <laughs> you ain't got revival until hell gets stirred up when hell gets stirred up you know you've had revival man we had hell stirred up all around us you know and these two girls are fighting in the foyer and i had to come in and break it up and the one just would not stop and she came back the next night and grabbed the girl in the foyer again. And I went to her, and I told her, listen, I love you, but if you can't behave yourself, you can't come back. You know, somebody said you told them they couldn't come back to church. There comes a time when we got to draw a line and say, if you're going to cause trouble, we just need to tell you goodbye. And uh, it wasn't like she was chewing gum, okay? She was beating people up. All right, don't, get, don't judge me. I felt that little judginess going on. Somebody online probably. And uh, I said, I love you. But if you can't behave yourself, you can't come back. The next night, she snuck in in a group of people. And I'll have you know she grabbed that girl coming to the, over some old skinny man. Wasn't, wasn't, didn't have no job. Didn't, uh, you know, was struggling. He was mean on drugs. And there they are fighting over this old guy. I'm like, why don't you both throw him out? And, and so I uh, finally started a fight again. I went to her and I told her, sis, listen, I love you. But uh, you can't come back acting like that. You know, so you're just going to have to find yourself another church. I guess that did it. She got mad at me and didn't come back. Well, I told her not to come back, so I don't know who won that fight. <laughs> but, uh, but she sure showed me. So in the middle of this, we got this precious young lady. Come on, don't judge me, y'all. Can we just be okay tonight? Can we just, you know. Uh, I grew up on the south side. I don't know what that means around here, but that was the bad side of town where I grew up. You know, we had people... You know, having gun and knife fights out in front of my house all the time was regular business. You know, that was just the order of the day. So as a pastor, I drew in a rough crowd, okay? But we got them saved. 
full of the Holy Ghost. They, it took some time, but they got cleaned up, you know. You know, it's rough when you can't let folks testify because they're going to cuss. you got to tell them, you can testify, but don't cuss. You know, they're like, Pastor, we don't cuss. <laughs> we do. I know you don't think it's cussing, but you cussing, you know. I did, man. I tell folks that, you know. And, uh, um, <laughs> Lord help me. Um, this girl comes in, and she comes in in a tube top and a miniskirt. And uh, she comes, I need to watch my words, okay? She goes walking into church, and she's sitting in the back. And at the, uh, Pastor, am I telling the truth? I mean, you, we had an interesting life. Listen, people talk about ministry, and uh, we've had a blast. <laughs> I got some good stories. You know, people say, Brother you tell a lot of stories. I've been at this a long time, and I have seen some stuff, you know, and still seeing stuff. She comes walking in, in a tube top and a mini skirt, and, uh, well, I was getting to that, Pastor Baker, Judah, but she just throws it out there. She was a stripper, you know, and um, she comes in, and, um, man, she comes down. She gives her heart to Jesus, I mean, completely transformed. And uh, the next night, that the same woman comes in in a pantsuit. I mean, she she looks so nice, you know. You would have never known her lifestyle. Radically transformed by the power of God. Uh, comes in and she comes up to the front and she says, Brother Benny, you know what my prayer is? I need a new job. <laughs> and that's something completely transformed by the power of God, Pastor Scott. Um, we got to reach those people. I had to, we, had, we had to go through some fights. You know, I had to, I had to play referee a time or two. You know, um, we had one night in youth. There was a young person that went after, I'll just be honest, the full of the devil attacked my wife. And we had uh, somebody down there, an assistant that was helping her, and grabbed him as he lunged for her, or grabbed her as, as uh, this girl lunged for my wife and was able to stop, and they prayed and, and dealt with that old devil. And it was, hey, man, we've been, we've been through some stuff, you know. So we got to reach those people. we got to. Somebody's got to reach them. But the religious, the, 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 the religious folks will never reach them because they don't care. That's, that's beneath me. We had, I probably shouldn't tell this, but being me, I'm going to tell it anyway. We had this, uh, we had a guest come to the church one time years ago, and we, uh, oftentimes, my ministry, people give me stuff, okay? They'll give me things. They'll give me uh, necklaces, rings. I've got gobs of rings that, uh, that people have given me. Uh, I've got this watch. Now, Scott, I, I have this every time I preach. It has fallen apart. As you can see, the, the faces broke off of it. I had a new band put on it. The new band broke again. I've carried this for years. An old prophet gave this to me. I said, Brother Benny, this has been around the world with me as I preach the gospel. So I want to give this to you as just a symbol of that anointing. It was, in, it was intact when he gave it to me. And he said, but as a symbol of the anointing, he said, I want you to keep this on your person when you preach. Carry it everywhere. Just, just, a, little, just a little reminder of how good God is. And... Um, it's um, generosity. Generosity. People have a heart of generosity. And the Bible says that this man on the side of the road, this religion, just won't walk him by. Religion will leave you where you are. And when the Spirit of Jesus comes by, the Spirit of Christ, things will change. And then, then we have, see, the Spirit of Religion would have had us just leave that girl alone. The girl that was fighting with the other girl, she stayed on, was with us almost to the end. She left for about a year. She backslid. Came back right before we left and apologized and repented. Pastor Scott, I'll never forget what she said to me. We went to all of her garden and had dinner. And she'd been with us a long time. I mean, we'd seen her kids have, have kids and brought in grandkids and you know, they meant a lot to our family, and they just left one day. I didn't know what happened. They, they, they backslid, and I didn't know. This is why she comes to me, and she said, Brother Benny, would, would you still be leaving if we were still here? And I said, well, I don't know how to answer that. I said, you know, I don't, I don't know how God made this decision, but I'm following the Lord. It's not dependent upon you being here or not. And she looked at him, and she started crying, and she said, you don't know how many times you came to me in my dreams. And uh, some, maybe some folks don't understand that, but many times I've had dreams where my pastor has come to me and instructed me. And many times the Lord will come to us 
a spiritual authorities figure and talk to us and give us direction and so that we'll, we'll have an understanding that he's there to help us, you know? And so, uh, uh, and then, then when we left, but most folks would have decided, I don't want them fighting folks in the church. <laughs> we brought order, correction. It was hard. Man, the first few years were tough. You know, I, I think we had to ask six people not to come back to the church. Well, most folks are out trying to get people to come in. We had to go to folks and say, we love y'all, and we want to reach you, but you're, you're a troublemaker. Seriously, that's tough stuff. You know, but the, the Bible says to mark those that cause division. So, but religion will leave you where you are. Religion don't care. Don't care if you're hurting. Don't care if you're broken. Don't care if you're offended. Just leave you where you are. And then the Bible says, and then the, what's the next person that came by? He, Levi. Levi comes walking by. That's tradition. Tradition will leave you right where you are. Tradition will tell you it matters about how uh, long your hair is. Religion will tell you it's what kind of clothes that you wear. Religion will tell you it's this way, and that's the only way we can do it. I mean, you know, religion never saved anybody. Religion does not save us. Now, I, I believe in traditions, okay? We have good traditions. A friend of mine preached a message. He went through the law of God and uh, separated the things that were law and the things that were tradition. And as he separated, he found out there wasn't so many things that were so hard as he thought after all because there were so many things that we had made law or gospel that were simply tradition. Um, you're untraditional tonight because you're meeting on a Saturday night. That's not traditional church. Now, more and more churches are doing that, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I think that's awesome, you know. But uh, but this it's, it's not traditional. Uh, you know, uh, growing up, I was taught that you had to wear a, a black suit and a white shirt and a black tie, and uh, if you didn't look like a mortician, you could not preach the gospel. I remember one time I went to my mom, and I said, well, the pastor got a new tie today, and she got on to me and said, don't say that. And I said, why? And she said, because people might think he's got money to buy a tie. I thought, as a little kid, I thought, that is the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't like care if he's got money to buy a tie or not. I sure don't. Um, tradition. Tradition will keep you right where you are and not care. Tradition doesn't care about your family. It doesn't get people saved. Get, now, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to be real, okay? So I believe in holiness. I do. I believe we should strive for holiness. But in there's a fine line between being religious and being holy. But I think when we're, just, just hear me, okay? We're trying to be holy. And we err just a touch on being religious but we're trying to be holy, I'd rather do that than have that anything goes kind of out. I know that, and I know there are a lot of folks that might disagree with me on that, but I would rather be known as the guy that prays, and I read my Bible, and I study, and I seek God, and I, and I fast, and, you know, coming in this weekend, you know, I've been telling my wife, I start a fast tomorrow night, and, uh, you know, I, I don't say that to build Benny Baker up, I say it because it's relevant, but I, I start a fast tomorrow night, it's just a three-day fast, but I'm looking forward to it. Because I'm going to take three days away, Pastor, and I'm just going to tuck myself away, and I'm going to seek God, and I'm going to get in His presence. And if that's religion, then call me religious. But that's not religious. I am pursuing God. I am a man in pursuit. And we've got to recognize the difference between a person in pursuit, because I know folks who think uh, if you don't drink, you're religious. If you don't cuss or curse, you're religious. And that's silliness. I know there are people that think if you um, if you don't dress a certain way, you're religious or do a certain thing. Listen, I was free in a tie, and I'm free outside of a tie. It don't matter to me. I go to churches that do it all. I usually have to go in. I have a tie and a suit out in my car. Because if I go into a church and the pastor's wearing a suit and tie, guess what? I'm changing. Come on, don't get mad at me. I'm not, try, not trying to fit in or be fake. I want to be me, but I also want to honor the house. And usually I'll text the pastor, what do you all wear? The other week I texted a pastor, this way he tells me. I said, what do you guys wear, you know, on Sunday morning? He said, Brother Benny, I am, I am five feet tall. And he says, I am five feet around. He said, so he tells me, he said, could you see me in a suit? I know what to say because I'm laughing by now, you know. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to be political, you know. I don't know. You don't wear suits. Because <laughs> he still don't answer my question, you know. 
He's like, man, last time I looked, wore a suit, I looked like a penguin. He said, he said, so no, buddy. He says, I wear some jeans. He says, I can't find jeans my size. I have to roll them up. And I just wear sweaters. And I mean, he's got me tickled, you know. And, you know, he's like, I, if you want to wear a suit, wear a suit. If you don't want to wear a suit, don't wear a suit. But if you expect me to wear one, buddy, I ain't wearing one, you know. And uh, he said, I used to try and do that. And he said, but, you know, he said that the cuff of his pants was the size of his waist, <laughs> you know. Um, I better move on. Um, but religion will throw that man out. Religion will say he can't be anointed. Uh, tradition will say that man can't be anointed and can't do what God's called him to be, do and be who God's called him to be. Religion and tradition will leave us where we are. But then all of a sudden, a Samaritan comes walking by. And this is where, where God's, I learned something I never learned before. So what is a Samaritan person? We know, well, that's a person that comes from Samaria, right? We know that Jesus met a woman at a well, you know, who was a Samaritan. And so there's lots of Samaritans throughout the Bible, but this is a good Samaritan. And, and so he's different than other folks. So what it is, is when a Gentile man uh, is uh, with a uh, 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 when a Jewish man is with a Gentile woman and they reproduce and that seed goes into the ovary of a Gentile woman it produces a Samaritan so think about this for a moment when the seed of a Jew gets into a Gentile it produces a Samaritan that is a picture of us in Christ that's a picture of that Christian. And so here we are. We're walking by. We see that person in need. God has blessed us. God has done great things in our life. And we can help him. So we go and we load him up and we clothe him. We cover him up. How many of you know love covers a multitude of sins? See, now, that does not just apply to your neighbor or the person on the street. You know, if, uh, if uh, uh, Sister Brian, if you fall short, you know, you're the praise and worship leader and you're up there in front. We should love you so much that if you fall short and you hadn't or anything like that, but we should love you so much that we take the covering of love and we throw it over you and we say we love you and you if, if you've fallen or messed up or you're in need, we're going to cover you. The same should be for every believer. That person sitting next to you, we should love them so much and say if you've messed up, if you've fallen short, we're going to take this cloak of love, we're going to throw it over you and we're going to help you get better. But the same should be for our past. We should have so much love and compassion for our pastor that we should say, maybe, maybe you fell short or I didn't, I didn't agree with something or whatever, but we are like that good Samaritan man where the seed of a Jew got inside of a Gentile and we took that cloak of love, we threw it over him and said, no matter what, I love you. That's, that's, that's God's picture of love. Of being a good neighbor and so the Bible says that he picked him up he put him on his animal I don't know what his condition was he was filthy he was bloody he was beaten at this point people had walked by some time had gone by he had probably soiled himself he stunk but he loved him enough to pick him up put him on his animal and bring him to a safe place and the Bible says, I'm almost done, okay? You ready? Hold with me. He'll hang with me just another five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 20. I got plenty of time. I'm good. All right. So uh, that's, that's an old one, but y'all fell for it. Um, but uh, so they get him and they, they bring him to this inn. And uh, he goes into the innkeeper and he says, This is what I want you to do. I want you to take care of him. I want you to make sure he is well. If he needs anything, I'll take care of it. And so he lays the pins down. And then he lays another pence down. And it's very important. So you know what a pence is? A pence is a day's wage. And he says, day one, I'm going to take care of it. And day two, I'm going to take care of it. But on day three, I will return. See, it's, just, it's a picture of Christ. He said, day one, I'm going to cover your wounds. I'm going to cover your iniquities. I'm, I'm going to cover your sin. I'm going to heal your body. On day two, I'm going to go to that place that you don't have to go. But on day three, I'm going to come back and everything that needs to be covered, I'm going to cover it with my blood and with my presence and, and know that I love you. And so on day three, he said, make sure if there's anything left that is owed, I'll pay it. Woo! Jesus said on the cross, I'm covering your sin. On that, that, uh, that, 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 that second day, I might be down in that grave, but on day three, when I come out, every debt that has been owed, everything, I'm going to pay a debt that I did not owe, that you could not pay, and for, a, for an eternity, I'm going to cover your sins with my blood. Man, 
I don't know about y'all, but that, that's some good stuff right there. We, uh, we need to recognize that we need to be like Jesus. So I said, who is the good Samaritan that is it Jesus? No, I believe it's the Spirit of Christ. I believe it's the Spirit of God that gets inside of us as believers, pushes us, and propels us to do the will of the Father. Amen? So if you're standing your feet with me, I'm all done preaching tonight. <clears throat> Lord, I just love you and I thank you. Praise God. I hope that you're enjoying today's broadcast. It is such a privilege and honor to have you tune in today, taking time out of your busy day with so much going on to listen to this broadcast. I, and I hope it's been a great blessing to you. Before we let you go for the day, we just want to ask you to, to sow into this ministry. Man, we are we have such a privilege to make such a big impact on the United States of America and around the world. Right now, through our broadcast ministry, through our revivals, Facebook, YouTube, all the things that we're doing, we are reaching potentially 50 million people every week with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to do more. We want to do so much more for the kingdom of God. And you can help us do that. Maybe you can't go around the world and preach uh, like Prophet Benny does, but but you can help me do it. And uh, I want you to know someday when we stand before the Lord, the Lord will uh, give you the same reward because you couldn't go, but you sent someone. Amen. So I'm asking you, help send us around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that God will bless you for it. I believe that one of the jobs of the prophet is to declare blessing over God's people, just like the widow who just had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. But God sent her Elijah, who spoke a prophetic word over her, and because of her obedience, God opened the windows of heaven, and her meal didn't run out, her oil didn't run out, and he, she, and the entire family ate during the time of famine. And then Elisha, Elisha, a woman comes to him who has nothing but a little bit of oil. And the Bible says, he said, go and borrow vessels, as many as you can, and pour into those vessels, and then go and pay your debt. Amen. And live on the rest. Oh, that's what an awesome word. That's what the prophetic does, my friend. So I believe as you sow into this prophetic ministry, God will allow the same blessing, the same miracles that we see to be imparted into your life and into your ministry. So again, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this broadcast today. All the information is right there on the screen. So go ahead and go to our webpage, uh, pay, PayPal, Cash App, all the ways to give. We appreciate your faithfulness so much. And listen, before you, uh, before you just sow once, go ahead and become a monthly partner. You can uh, partner with us every month and we'll send you a newsletter and updates on the ministry and let you, go and let you know what's going on. It'll be a great blessing to you, a great blessing to us in the kingdom of God. So thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you about this time next week. God bless. Have your best day ever.